this morning we're talking about men's health. That includes, of course, mental health. It's no secret that some guys aren't that great at expressing their emotions. Shocker. But our next guests are trying to change all of that. Have a look. James checking in emotionally. I feel excited. Feeling anxious, feeling anxiety. I feel really alive. I feel really proud. This is not a typical sight. You feel your whole body from the bottom of your feet to the top of your head. There's no technology, no alcohol, no TV. Just men sitting around talking about their feelings. <laughs> Every man is an organization that creates the space for men to come together to learn some skills that aren't normally available to them, which have all to do with being vulnerable, with being expressive, and with feeling exactly what it is they're feeling. Formed in 2017 by Dan Doty, there are now 80 groups across the country. On this night, this group discussed everything from fatherhood to fear of failure. We're having our first child in four weeks. Mm. So I'm excited about starting a family. I set goals, and then when I get them, it's like, I don't learn to like appreciate mm. it. I got to see that I don't belong in this little box anymore. Doty created every man, hoping to impact future generations of men. He says he was raised in a tight-knit family, but expressing emotions was not part of their routine. And it wasn't until years later, after working with high school-aged boys, that he saw the need for this type of group. There's quite a big social stigma uh, that keeps a lot of men from knowing how to access what they feel. So we're pretty straightforward with it. We say we're coming together to do this thing because it's part of being healthy. Veteran Aaron Blaine says after leaving the military, he felt lost and alone. Joining Everyman saved him. Uh, Everyman's allowed me the opportunity to take care of myself and to be able to take care of other people. Blaine has started leading Everyman wilderness retreats, bringing together veterans and civilians, giving each man a new perspective. Guys on both sides walked away feeling inspired, they felt supported, they all opened up to each other. It really validated what we're doing is real. Doty and Blaine both hope they are teaching their boys and others, leading by example. We're not at all telling men about some new way to be a man or new masculinity. It's really just like, hey man, let's make this place where you can practice being you more and more. Pretty cool stuff that we're joined now by Dan Doty, who is one of the co-founders of Everyman, along with Aaron Blaine and Rajiv Lehans, who are both Everyman members. Appreciate you guys being here. Powerful stuff. Dan, your co-creator, we saw in the beginning of the tape a little check-in with the, the fellows. A yeah. little, like, what, what's, what's the important part of that of, like, hey, how are you feeling right now? So, yeah, the check-in is a really simple practice to become present and become <clears throat> here and, and to show you where I am, who I am, how I feel in this moment as a man, which is something that men don't practice. Aaron, I, I, I was watching you during the tape, and you're, you're getting very emotional. What's going on right now? Yeah, um, I was just watching, basically seeing my wife and kid up there, and then realizing what this has done for, for me has just been super impactful. So I started to really feel that just being on camera. <laughs> what, what, did you, what did you tell us a little bit about your story? You were, you were in the Army? Yeah. Was, and and when, when you came back to civilian life, what, what was that transition like? Yeah, it was different. Uh, I came back and I thought everything would be pretty easy, just, you know, streamline into a job and, you know, start a family and, and move on. And, you know, I moved out to Montana and it just, it really ended up not being so easy. Give us an example so of a couple simple. roadblocks that you hit mentally. Yeah, just like social situations being, you know, making friends. Um, yeah, just like being, being connected to the community. It just didn't feel like I had access to that at that time. Well, thank you for your service, first of all. Thank you. And I'm glad you found every man. Now, that yeah, sounds absolutely. like it's been a game changer for you. An absolute game changer. Turning yeah. 30, you, yeah. you had some anxiety issues, some personal insecurities, and then you go on your first retreat. What was that like? What would you get out of it? Yeah, it was really intense for me. Every, every man was kind of my 30th birthday to gift to myself <laughs> in a lot of ways. Um, I put a lot of pressure on 30. But, you know, I feel like I carried this seven-year-old version of myself that was so insecure along with me my whole life. Mm -hmm. um, and it affected my personal relationships, my intimate relationships. And I just wanted to attack that um, and figure out what, you know, 
what I was becoming as a man. Um, and this was a big part of that for me. Hey, Dan, there's, there's, there's an E missing in every man. Yeah. What, what's up well, with the, that? the real story is that, is that a typo? That, no, we couldn't, we couldn't afford the website. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? But then there's a joke, and, and this was explained to me later, that the E got removed because men, because men don't have emotions. And oh, that's what wow, interesting. So, that, that was good. good. <laughs> All right, we're going to have more of this conversation. We'll take a quick break. We're going to come back and try and get to the root of what it is that makes it so hard for us dudes to express our feelings. More right after this. All right, we're back with Dan Doty, co-founder of the men's group organization Everyman, along with two of its members, Aaron and Rajiv. Fellas, let's just break it down. It's Men's Health Month. I was diagnosed with general anxiety disorder, really struggled with it about 10 years ago. And, it really, and I realized 10 years ago that I had probably had it for about 10 years, and I never spoke about it once. It wasn't until a male setting with peers and friends that I started just describing what I thought was ridiculous feelings when they all, a couple of them went, I have that, I've got that, that's called this, and it led me to cognitive therapy, and it's changed my life. Why do we have such a hard time communicating our emotions? Well, I think we haven't been taught. We haven't been shown how it hasn't been modeled for. So what you're explaining is one of the first major benefits that guys get from joining our groups is, is to hear that other guys are struggling too. It's so simple to say that. If right. we could all just simply step up, say what we're struggling with, it means so much. And we know that shows us we're not alone. It gives us support. It's so simple. Yeah. yeah. We also have psychotherapist and author of a book called Disconnected. His name is uh, Thomas Kirsten. Oh, uh, Thomas, thanks for being with us, sir. Uh, for guys who can't get to a group, who, for guys who can't, for whatever reason, join groups like Everyman or some of the other groups out there, what can they do uh, to get more in touch with their emotions? Well, there's, there's a couple of things that they can do. Uh, for one, women tend to primarily seek therapy more than men do. It's just the way it is. Um, and I, get, I do get a, a, a good amount of men in my private practice. And I can tell you this much. When they come in, and usually it's their wives kicking them in a the tail saying, you've got to go see something, <laughs> they want to come back. Because uh, it's now a, a place for them where they can express themselves, where they can discover some things about themselves that they didn't know about. Um, if you don't have the resources, you can't do that. Confide in a friend, okay? I made friends today in the back with these guys. And we did, I mean, we spoke for an hour, and I feel connected with these guys already. That's how simple it is. But I think, generally speaking, you know, from a societal perspective, like men don't, aren't supposed to talk about how they feel. And that's Why? nonsense. That's at the root that's of it nonsense. All. Is it ego? <laughs> yeah, I think it's just the way we've been raised in, our gen in this generation mm -hmm. historically. But I think we're starting to see some improvement. I, and it is an ego. Um, if I could say anything to you guys or any other man watching right now is start expressing what's going on <clears throat> beneath the layers of your meat suit of a body. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's how you're going to discover who you right. are. And that's how you're going to get the help that you need if you need it. It's also that, not an attack on masculinity, yeah, no. which is another point I think you have to make to men feel like they're checking their masculinity at the door. Yeah. Right? You're in the army. You're the guy. Yeah. You're protecting our freedoms. You come home. Things aren't right. You need help. You want to talk about it. Yeah. That's like this dichotomy of weakness versus the ultimate strength which you represented. Absolutely. But you're strong in all of it. Right. Yeah. And then that's the way I feel now. And at first it was scary. And then getting into it and then having other veterans step into it and have the same exact experiences. Mm -hmm. You know, it was like, whoa, this actually works pretty well. And Anyone can do it. Yeah. People assume it's an either or. You're either tough yeah. or you're weak. Right. But, right. but right. the reality is we're, we have a whole spectrum of human experience that we can. We're humans yeah. first, right? right? Before we're men, we're humans. And we have feelings too. Is, it the, is the toughest part taking that first step, the opening up to, to what could be strangers, basically? Yeah, I think a lot of it is about just personally redefining what strong is to you. Mm -hmm. um, I think for men, you know, especially like in Hollywood, you're, you're seen as you know, machismo, and you see, you see men, like, really, fo the, the focus is on, like, their physical strength yeah. or, you know, like that military strength that you're talking about. But really, I think I want to move, I hopefully move culture to the point where we're, we're talking about, like, mental strength is, like, being really attractive. Like, I agree with peace that. of mind being yeah. sexy, right? Like, Absolutely. when Hollywood makes that switch. Yeah, handshake and a hug. They're yeah. both powerful. Yeah. Yep. And, and also yeah. just thinking about intimacy in a different way, too, like, I feel very intimate when I'm in, in a group with men, with men in these groups. Um, we're getting intimate on a different level, like we're really connecting mm -hmm. uh, in person. I do get the sense, level. though, as a, as a society and as a culture, there is a shift that's starting to happen. And maybe the shift know. is because guys like you are coming forward and we're talking about some of this. But I get the sense that, that we're, we are starting to I move like the needle so. just mm -hmm. to be. Yeah. A big light's being shined on mental health, for sure. 93% yeah. of millennial men want more places to open up and be emotionally expressive. And that's a, I mean, it's a huge yeah. shift. Yeah. Huge. Well, this is a good conversation. We've yeah, been sitting here all so day, much. but I'm glad we started group, it. Thank, Thank you, Thomas. Started. Appreciate it. Thank you, fellas, very much. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back after this. <laughs> 